Hi, I'm Rich Folley. I'm the host of Book View Now. We're here at the Miami Book Fair 2015. I'm joined right now by Jonathan Evison, the author of many books, but the most latest one is This Is Your Life, Harriet Chance, exclamation point. Uh, and the man who's wearing some beautiful beer socks, I notice, uh, which is you know, a gift for my mother-in-law. <laughs> very nice. If there's anything that I know, it's the beer, the, it's the hat. That's the Jonathan Evison that I've known. Um, and I appreciate you joining us again. You're going to be with us for a little bit. We're going to be talking to a number of other authors as well. Thanks Sweet. for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So you live out in Seattle. We're about as far from your home as possible. You got on a plane last night to come on out here. You're Bainbridge Indeed, Island, I, did. I believe. Best flight of the 31 city tour because I just, I got on the plane, I fell asleep, I woke up, and we were in our final descent. It's beautiful. Very nice. Well, let's talk This Is Your Life, Harry Chance. Because this, I mean, all of your books are sort of different, but uh, there are some themes that run through all of your books. But Harriet is an 80-year-old or 78-year-old woman. Um, she is, and you are a 30, 40-something-year-old man. <laughs> 40-something. We'll <laughs> yeah. just leave it at that. Uh, but certainly not an 80-year-old woman. Uh, a challenge to write in the voice of a 78-year-old woman? Talk to me about that. You know, honestly, kind of no. I mean, like, the one thing I can do okay is I'm empathic. So uh, I, I just, you know, for me, it's just a matter of getting out of my own way. I mean, I feel like uh, you know, most, most of the emotions we feel are pretty, pretty universal, but like you just got to consider the context. Your gender is different. Your generation is different. Uh, your yearnings in life are different. Your history is different. If I just drill down in the character, get, out, you know, just get completely out of my own way and inhabit the character, once, one, once that character's in the narrative landscape, their decisions, their actions, they all seem pretty inevitable. Yeah. The, there's a conceit to the book, the idea of This Is Your Life, that famous 1950s television show where people are bringing back your life. And there's a, I mean, throughout the entire book, I have a vision of somebody standing next to Harriet as you take us through elements of her life, going all the way back to when she was a young woman to when she's older. I have a vision of a man with a microphone next to her doing the whole thing, and next, Harriet, and it's all That's part of the story. Yeah. I have the. See, I'm, I have a lot of self contempt for myself. I can't stand myself. So I just. I, I picture this as Harriet's muse. This is. This is. I have this contemptuous voice that just goes say like twenty times a day. God, you're such an idiot. I can't believe you said that. And like, what a mess you made of that. Like, I, I pictured that voice is. Uh, you know, kind of an alternative Harriet, really. You know, a Harriet who who got to tell the story she wanted to tell if, if the events of the book hadn't unfolded the way they did. And. Um, so that that part was really natural for me. I mean, that 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 it, 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 that voice it kind of uh, it teases her, it cajoles her, but ultimately it's uh, uh, you know sympathetic to to her plight because yeah. it is her. That's Let's it. talk about her plight. Her plight. Her husband Bernard um, dies in the book. I mean, that's not a secret. That's part of your story, and it's about her coming to terms with that, but looking way back in her life and thinking about the different jags her life has taken. Talk to me about just that sort of structure of the novel and how you decided to tell the story of a 78-year-old woman who is reinventing her life. Well, first of all, the first four drafts of this novel were just an absolute mess. They were just stultifyingly linear and just, I mean, it was, it was 300 pages of Harriet padding around in her slippers, you know, making tea and looking out the window, but you re didn't rearranging up. Bernard's possessions. And uh, I realized that I, I, was, I was missing my greatest opportunity to write a nonlinear narrative because, you know, all my books, as you said, they're, they're different, but they, they have similarities. They usually have some sort of frustrated linear narrative and here this is a book about reflection and memory and, and, and association all totally nonlinear processes so when I had that aha moment like what am I doing just telling the story of day one day two day three day four day five day six etc when I can break this open I mean so like in the four story in that third person coverage of Harriet and Cruz and in, in the week leading up to it there are these triggers as there are in life you know what I mean they're, they're, so it's not as if I just wrote all these scenes in Harriet's life and shuffled the deck and threw them out there it's there's actually sort of an organic unfolding to the story because you know stuff is happening in real time that makes Harriet harken back to to these other times and and then these two narratives start to work as sort of a puzzle together they become revelatory when you have both pieces of information uh, like every few chapters or so you have to really recontextualize everything you knew about Harriet so she constantly surprises you as a character none of that was happening in the early drafts you can ask my editor he's like I, I don't even like her but you knew it was there you knew underneath if you just kept coming to work every day and sitting down that something was going to present itself I loved the character and I, I think it was uh, I think it was necessary to live with her I mean the minutiae of every day going through all those dull small days in Harriet's life none of that was wasted I mean I, I think I needed to know her that intimately and I, 
to, to the point where I got to when I, when I did that part of the book, it took me three weeks. Yeah. All those passages I wrote, that, that stuff flew out of me because I knew everything about her at that point. And I don't think, if I, if I had started with the conceit of that... Uh, the, this is your that, life? Yeah, I, I, don't think I, I don't think I would have got, been able to penetrate as deeply. I mean, I think it's really important to spend that kind of time. I mean, I do this with a lot of novels where I, I mean, I just throw away entire drafts you know, I mean, like literally just drag them yeah. into the, and then, then just start writing from ground zero again. You know, I, I know this is not unique to you as a writer. I think uh, writers just have this kind of thing. When they know they've got an idea, you love the character, you knew you were onto something, you are going to stick with it. But there's a, a special workmanlike quality to you as a writer from what I've gathered. And from I follow you on Twitter, and I follow you, and I, I, you, you're very public when you toss something out. But you're, there's something about you and the way you write that is just come to work every day, punch in, you know, like, it's like a factory worker. I mean, I'm a working there. class kid. I mean, it's stuck, you know? I mean, my people, we had to work a lot of hours just to keep a roof over our head. And, you know, I'm making a living selling novels supporting my family, and it's not, you know, yeah. it's not like I can afford to just sit up there in my ivory tower. I gotta beat the street. But you know? some of your old music uh, background comes into play, too. You're on the road all the time. I mean, when the books comes out, you have one of the longest tours. I mean, tours aren't exactly big deals anymore for authors. It's hard for an author to get a tour, but you're still doing 20 cities, and you know, I feel like Even there should more, be a t-shirt yeah. uh, you know, on the back with the cities that you're hitting. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a little exhausting, but I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity. I mean, you know, the, the, the whole conceit of writing a novel is to connect. And so, you know, for, for 20 years, I was writing books that nobody was reading. My mom wasn't reading them. Nobody was publishing them. So like, I'm still operating at a deficit you know, so it's still a thrill for me to go out and appear at bookstores and festivals and, and meet readers, and I'm so appreciative of them because, you know, I get to, the, the reader is the, the greatest tool I have, you know. You know, the reader's got to do everything I do backwards and in heels, and so I get to go out and meet them and, like, you know, hear them, you know, appreciate my work and connect with it. It's, that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel lucky to be on the, the, that side of it every once in a while when you're out there. It's great to run into you wherever you happen to be. Um, Hollywood has discovered your books, too. I mean, we've got a couple in the pipeline. Um, this is your life, Harriet Chance, already announced that it was optioned by Focus Features. Uh, it must be cool. Now that they know they've got a talent that, that can tell a story that they like, and now you've had a couple books, uh, at least, uh, that have been optioned. I think all three of them. I think all Lulu, my books have been optioned. Yeah. It's just now they're But they're being made, made, too. Now, yeah. Yeah. Tell us about how, what, you're, what you're hearing about This Your Life, Harry Chance, where it is in the pipeline. Well, it's very early in, in the development, but they're, they're looking at a, a writing team that I'm really fond of. I can't say any names, but I'm really fond of these guys. They're amazing. And, uh, and you know, they're talking about profiling a couple of directors that I really like. But, you know, I don't know. I really have nothing to do with it. I'm just a, you know... Just a lucky guy. Yeah, but there's a few there's a few studios out there that do good books. You know, there's a few movie studios that know how to do books and that really have taken a stand on them. Focus is one of them, so it sounds like you're in good hands. Yeah, and I wonder what you know. I've wondered. I mean, I, I'm not a high concept guy. I don't. I, I I wonder what it is about my books that appeal to Hollywood. And I, I think it is just that they're they're basically all character studies. Yeah. I mean, you know, they all look different on the surface. They, but, but, but really, they're all just character studies. And I think Hollywood likes character studies. Yeah. And finding but, their way to some sort of reinvention. I mean, trying to get their right, way that to... that is my only theme. <laughs> you got more, me. Reinvention <laughs> is my only theme. There's more themes than that, but this one is a powerful one. Because, I, I, and I love that about the fundamentals of caregiving. I love that about all about Lulu, and I love, I mean, it's just different ages. But it seems like reinvention. Now you have it the same thing with This Your Life, Harriet. Yeah, Chance. right. This is a coming of old age. Lulu was a coming of age. And yeah. It provides, yeah, God, yeah. I don't, where do I do now? Well, like, I don't know. After, well, you did have West, you did have West of here, which was like about an entire town. So, yeah. you know, there's something you can do there. There's more. I don't know where you go, Johnny, but I always, everybody follows I'm you. I'm right in the so. great American landscaping yeah. novel, right? It'll now. be great. We can't. lawn mowing. <laughs> Yeah, you just told us one last thing. You, you, you live on Bainbridge Island, you're in the Pacific Northwest. Big storm smashed into your house the other day. Yeah, and, yeah that was my place out on the peninsula. We got a place out in the foothills of the Olympic Mountains. And you write there. I had there. a 200, yeah, that's where I write. And I had a, it was like a 200 foot fir tree. It must have been about 150 years old. It was four and a half, five feet in diameter. And it just, it just came out by the root wad and just <laughs> crashed on my man cave. And Luckily, you there. all my albums, there's a couple thousand albums, I'm a record collector, nothing was hurt inside, but the structure's just total. I, I, I felt terrible. I mean, anybody who I, I follows you... At least you it wasn't or, the house. I feel terrible, too. Yeah. And you know insurance companies, they're not going to cover hardly anything this... But you're safe. Started. Everything I'm is safe. safe. Yeah. Manuscript safe. I actually turned safe. the thing into yeah. a blessing. I got a pretty good attitude. I mean, I was like, you know, at least we weren't in it. 
at least it wasn't the house. At least I had some insurance. And, right. And now I'm just trying to look forward to rebuilding the man cave bigger and better. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to see what comes out of that man cave. For us, mm -hmm. it's books. For you, it's your, your place to hang out and hide out. But uh, looking forward to the next one. But we're not letting you go. You're going to stick with us for the hour. Uh, Johnny, thanks for being here. Oh, man. Uh, Jonathan Evison, this is your life, Harriet Chance.